this video, I'm going to share with you 22 insights and principles that are going to get your whole attitude regarding studying and practicing moving in the right direction. Let's go. Number one, the quality of your performance is absolutely determined by the quality of your study and practice habits. Number two, the real reason that you are not making progress is typically not because you're untalented, but because you're studying and practicing the wrong way. Number three, the real reason you make mistakes and seem, seem to forget the music is that you never really learned the music properly in the first place. Number four, quality first, quantity second. In other words, five minutes of mindful attention beats five hours of mindless repetition. Number five, if you study and practice the right things the right way, you should expect super fast progress, not painfully slow, kind of, sort of progress, only after years and years and years of arduous effort. Number six, every aspect of music making, including how you conceive of the music, how you perceive the music with your senses, and even how you execute the music with your muscles is controlled by your brain. And so the goal of studying and practicing is always, not sometimes, not most of the time, always to change your brain. Number seven, because your muscles do exactly, exactly what your brain tells them to do, every mistake is a mental, not a physical error. And so when you're having difficulty playing something, realize that there's nothing wrong with your hardware. When you're having difficulty playing something, what it means is you're running inefficient or buggy software. Number eight, music is a language, a unique language that is both universal and untranslatable with its own wordless, wordless grammar and vocabulary. And so the goal of studying and practicing is the process of learning how to speak the language of music. Number nine, your brain is naturally wired to look for and appreciate and respond to patterns. In fact, your brain enjoys patterns. It does not enjoy chaos and randomness. So the good news is, once your brain recognizes a musical pattern, you don't have to try to memorize it. Right? Once your brain recognizes a musical pattern, it becomes a permanent part of your musical mind. Number 10. Studying and practicing the right way engages all four, repeat, four musical intelligences. Oral, A-U-R-A-L, meaning how the music sounds and feels. Number two, analytical, meaning our theoretical understanding of the musical patterns we're playing. Number three, visuospatial, meaning the physical arrangement and sequence of keys on the keyboard. And of course, number four, kinesthetic, meaning things like the fingering and the choreography used to play the music. In simpler terms, I like to think about this as ears, intellect, eyes, and muscles. Number 11. If you study and practice the music with all four musical intelligences engaged, you are doing more than merely memorizing the music. You're internalizing the music, 
in multiple dimensions that mutually reinforce each other. So instead of just memorizing, kind of sort of memorizing the music by finger, you are deeply understanding the music by ear, by intellect, by eye, and by muscle. 12. Studying and practicing with all four musical intelligences engaged builds enormous confidence when you perform and is the absolutely best antidote to stage fright. 13. If you study and practice the right way, with all four musical intelligences, intelligences engaged, your musical intentions will automatically trigger the appropriate choreography when you perform. 14. Every growing musician should be doing two things simultaneously, adding music you love to your repertoire and working on your general musicianship. 15. Every piece of music you play is a unique combination of patterns that you want to get into your ears, intellect, eyes, and muscles. And so to that end, your study of general musicianship, things like scales, chords, chord voicings, chord progressions, uh, tonality, form, meter, and rhythm, all give you the knowledge and skill required for you to hear and understand and see and execute these musical patterns. 16. Any behavior that you repeat again and again eventually becomes an unconscious habit. In other words, practice makes permanent. And in other, other words, poor practice habits make it possible for you to, to become quite skilled, skilled, air quotes, skilled at making mistakes. So you have to be extremely careful about what and how you practice. 17. Never, ever ignore a mistake. A mistake is like a good friend who's telling you you still have something to learn. But that mistake is valuable only if you have the honesty and the humility and the discipline required to respond to it constructively. Right? This is the real hard part of learning how to play the piano. And this is what mastery is made of. 18. You will never master something by repeating it poorly over and over and over again, hoping that by some miracle, someday, somehow, it will become easy. All you're really doing is ingraining poor habits that are going to be really hard to eradicate later on. 19. When something is wrong, the very worst thing you can do is to play it again the exact same way. And so to put this in positive terms, if at first you don't succeed, please do indeed try again, but try again in a different way. Thinking about it a different way and trying to move your body in a different way. Number 20. What lots of people consider practicing is little more than mindless repetition and a bunch of bad habits, right? What do we do? I, I'm still guilty of this to this day. We always start at the beginning of the piece. And then what do we do? We make a mistake. And then what happens? We go back to the very beginning of the piece again instead of focusing on the mistake. What else do we do? We practice, air quotes, practice faster than we can play accurately. We air quotes, practice with sloppy rhythm. And we air quote, quotes, practice with sloppy technique. Of course, this is not studying and practicing at all. 
All we're doing is ingraining a bunch of bad habits even deeper. 21. Talent alone can take you only so far. The real key to success is as easy to say as it is hard to do. If you want to get good, you have to change your study and practice habits. Number 22, and finally, getting good is the inevitable, I emphasize the inevitable reward for replacing a very short list, repeat, very short list of unproductive habits with a very short list, emphasis, very short list of productive study and practice habits. And that is going to be the subject of our very next video. Stay tuned.